What is going on everybody? Welcome to part six of our intermediate Python programming tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about the time it module. So first of all, why would you use time it? So you can use time, well, first of all, what does time it do? Time it measures the amount of time it takes for a certain snippet of code to run. So why would you use time it over just say, um, saying, you know, start equals time dot time after you've imported time and then total time um, would just be equal to time dot time. So the current time minus the start, boom, that's how long it took, right? Well, the problem is, especially with smaller snippet, snippets of code, that's not as, that's not precise because there might be a background operation that's just momentarily running that might disrupt that little snippet of code enough to make it appear that that snippet of code took 10 seconds, but really it took 10 seconds just because of something else unrelated. So what time it's gonna do for you is it's actually gonna run your snippet of code, say 10,000 times, depending on the snippet of code, of course, you can modify it, but uh, let's say 10,000 times. So you get a much more even um, and much more um, uh, statistically relevant <laughs> sample size, basically, to, to, to figure out which one's quicker to run. Uh, let's just see it in action. So we're gonna start with input list equals a uh, range of 100. And then we're gonna define that div by five function again. Uh, if you've been following along, you might actually already have this. So feel free to just sit on your hands and wait for me to write it out. So if num modulo five equals zero, basically this is just asking um, if the number is divisible by five, uh, return true, otherwise return false, no problem. Now let's define a generator that's gonna return to x, y, z. So let's, we could say i for i in input list if div by five i. So basically this will be a generator that consists of numbers if they're divisible by five in the range of 100. Then we could say, um, an example of this for like list comprehension might actually be just this, 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 and this. Okay, so that's really the only difference. Um, this list comprehension, this is a generator. Now, what we can do is we can use time it to see which one's faster. Now, real quick, let me just show a quick example of time it and then we'll implement what we just wrote here. So, let's just uh, import time it and then we're just gonna print time it dot time it um, and then time it just runs a string of Python code so we can say one plus three and then we say number equals um, let's just say a big number like this like uh, I'm doing 500,000 so this is how long 500,000 um, examples are gonna take so it took this many seconds so not a really long time let's do a few more there we go a little longer anyway you get the idea so to figure out how long each operation ran, you can see you would actually divide that time by this number because as we make this number bigger, it takes a little bit longer to run. So we made this 10 times the size and it appears to be taking, didn't we just do 10 times? Yeah, oh no, that's legit. So 10 times 0.6 is six. Okay, too many tutorials filmed today. I'm doing, not doing well. Okay, cool. So. Um, that's just a quick example of the time it um, library. Let's test it. So let's first test it on like this block of code here. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight all of it, copy, and then I'm going to just comment it out. And I'm going to print um, time it dot time it. And then we're going to triple quote this bad boy paste, just the exact paste of that code. Um, and then we're going to say number equals 50 to start. I don't know, maybe we'll do 5,000. I think this should be a pretty quick operation, especially for the generator. Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty quick, right? Now, how long does it take maybe to make this a, to do the list comprehension? Okay, save that, run that. Okay, you can see to make the list, it took a lot longer, like way longer. But the real question, the other question you might have is, okay, well, that's not really totally fair because this actually built the list. So it put the list into memory. So how long does that maybe take? What if we were to compare those? So let's take this and we can convert this um, back to a generator. 
But then we can actually do, um, we can convert it to a list. And in fact, I, mm, I don't know if we have to, I think we could just throw a list in front of it, but that feels weird. Let's run that really quick. Okay, and so you can see that converting it to a list while using a generator took slightly longer. It's pretty negligible, but I think we would probably still always find that the creation of first a generator, then converting it to a list is about the same. Um, I think, I wonder if that would work every time. Let's do a quick live demo. My question is, because we're saying list I for I, so we're almost removing the whole generator expression sense of it all. Let me do this and let's bring this back. Whoops. Okay. So in theory, this is like saying, okay, that's definitely list comprehension. But when we say list, this parenthesis here is corresponding to list and the generator. I don't really know if it's a generator by default, like a tuple is by default. I think this will work, but let's just try. So uh, for I in X, Y, Z, print I. And then I'll be curious to know, yeah, so that worked as, as you would expect. But I wonder if on my example where we added two more, where now it's a list of the generator for sure, does that still work? Yes, it does. Interesting. It's fascinating. It's absolutely riveting. Cool. Anyway, learning new things for myself. Okay, back to the tutorial. Um, so as you can see, uh, we're pretty much done with the time yet. We just kind of wanted to show an example, but you can pass snippets of code like this. Now, one thing I will just stress is you have to pass everything that you consider. This is like a separate script almost that you're running. So when you have like, it could have been easy for you to think that you should have been able to get away with this right because um, input list is already defined up here and then div by five is defined here but that's not going to work it's going to say those things are um, yeah they're not defined even though you're like yes it is but it's not because it's like running in its own kind of process and it doesn't have access to those things so remember um, to put all of the code in here and to do that you can just use triple quotes uh, to make that happen so um, I think that's really all I really wanted to show um, for this. Just uh, always remember, at least this was just a stupid example of comparing generators to lists. Of course, creating a generator is much faster than creating a list. Another thing that we could do um, is compare uh, the following. So what if we wanted to compare, this is getting messy. So let's first write the code and then we'll time it below. So we've got div by five. We've got the generator expression up here. Let us time the iteration. And I'm gonna comment this out for now because I'm not gonna use it right this moment. Let's time how long it takes to do for i in x, y, z print i. So let's run this code. So the creation of a generator and the iteration through that generator. So we'll copy this, we'll uh, comment it out, paste it, run it. And in fact, oh, it's gonna print it out. Oh no. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just, uh, let's just define a variable. Let's just say X equals I. It's like printing it out to my console. It's not on the same, same screen. Okay, it, but fascinating, it just, it went. And it tells you how slow printing to console is. Okay, let's try it one more time, just cleaning up things. Okay, so this was with the generator and then an iteration through. Uh, just going off of my memory, uh, this is pretty close to how long it took for us just to build the list. Now let's do list comprehension. So we just change these two things. So list comprehension is slightly faster, not by a whole lot, but let's add some numbers here. And okay, so this will be list comprehension. How many do we add? So it should take about nine seconds. Probably shouldn't have done it for that long, but while we're waiting, let's just change this to a generator. Okay, 9.4 seconds. And we'll run it one more time. So that was for List comprehension, now we'll see how long it might take for a generator. 
But again, the whole point of a generator isn't to be fast, it's to not use memory. But that time it appears to actually, in all the other cases, it was not faster. Because remember, this was the generator. This was list comprehension. This is list comprehension. This is a generator. Interesting. But in that case, it was faster. Um, it's also probably going to be faster on really huge lists, but I, I don't really know. It, it really just depends on what these lists are of, how we're building lists. It's just a whole variety of factors. But in most cases, at least if you already have the list, it's going to be quicker if you can have that list in, in your RAM and iterate through that. Because if it's in your RAM, it's already there. It's ready to go. As opposed to a generator, it's being truly generated on the fly. But uh, it's quick to generate versus build an actual list out. So f interestingly enough, that was faster. And I think we had a decent sample size. So that's kind of interesting. But I am recording and I'm doing all kinds of stuff. I don't know. It would be interesting. Uh, maybe comment below if you got the same results on that one. Just fascinating. Okay, that's it for the time it uh, module. Really simple, but it's just a good thing to kind of have at your disposal to test and see what's faster in certain exact scenarios that you might come across. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about enumerate, so stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, till next time.